share my screen. Oh, I have my video off. Hello. Okay. Today is day three. We're solving linear equations. So the big thing today is that we are no longer dealing with expressions. Everything we've done so far, phones away, y'all, has been dealing with expressions. Today we are actually dealing with um, equations. We're going to have equal signs, okay? So we are solving four variables, okay? Um, I do have these instructions, these steps, if you need. Um, I will put them back up at the end if y'all need me to, um, but don't spend a bunch of time writing them down right this second because it's a lot to write, okay? So unit one, day three, solving linear equations, okay? Um, I have like eight practice problems. We're not going to do all of them just because I want to make sure you have plenty of time to practice. But we're going to go over, like some of them we're not going to solve all the way, but we're going to set up to where they're easy to solve. Okay, so number one, this is a simpler one. I like to draw my line in my equation, or my equal sign, just because it reminds me if I'm moving something to the opposite side, I have to use the opposite sign. This is not in your notes. This is when it's not in your packet is notes. So you'll write down whatever you need to write down on the front, okay? Um, or in your spiral or whatever you're using for notes. Okay, so on this one, what do you think I need to do first? What am I solving? Well, first, what am I solving for? X. X, okay? Will y'all open the door? Okay, I'm solving for X. So somebody said what I need to do first. What did you say? Distribute, Distribute. okay? So seven times X. 7 times negative 3. Well, 7 times x is 7x. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. And I didn't do anything to this side, so I'm literally just going to bring it down. Okay. Now, oh, people in the waiting room. Okay, so now... I need to combine my variables. I need to get all of my variables on one side. We just started, y'all. Um, I personally always move my smallest x. If that's not what you do, that's not a big deal. You'll still get the same answer. I'll just have some negatives where you have positives and you'll have positives where I have negatives. That's all it changes. Okay, so I'm going to move my 7x. I like to always combine my variables first. Okay. So once I combine this, I get negative 21. What's 9x minus 7x? And I'm going to bring down my minus 7 as well. Okay. So knowing that, y'all, we're solving for x. We want to get x by itself. So what do I need to move now? The 7. How do I move that minus 7? Add it. Negative 21 plus 7 is negative 14 equals 2x. And what is my last step? Divide by 2. Okay. When I divide by 2, I end up getting x equals negative 7. Okay. I want you to know that you can write your solution like this. Or you could see it written in a solution set. That's what these fancy brackets mean. Okay, it just means that's the set of your solutions to this equation. Now there's only one solution here. We won't really get into multiple solutions for a little while, but that's what that means. Any questions with what we just did? Pretty simple, straightforward, cool. So it gets a little different when we look at problems like this one. Okay, so what are we going to do first here? What are we solving for? A. Okay. So what do I need to move first? I need to subtract the 1 from both sides. Okay. 1 minus 1 is 0. And I get 3 fifths A equals 7. Now, I want you all to realize that fractions just mean divide. So that, div that over 5, that fraction bar 5 on the bottom means divide by 5. How do we get rid of division? Multiply. We multiply. So if I multiply both sides by 5, these 5's cancel. Okay, and I get 3a equals 35. So 
So what do you think I do next? Divide, Divide by what? I get A equals 35 over 3, or put it in my fancy brackets. So not too bad. Any questions so far? Cool. So we're going to look at this one, but we're not going to do the whole thing, okay? Um, I want you to realize that is a fraction bar. What do you think we're going to do first here? Huh? Not the parentheses. What's the, what's the part that makes this ugly? The 5 on the bottom. So let's get rid of that 5 on the bottom. Doesn't that just mean divide 5? What's the opposite of divide 5? Multiply. multiply 5. So I can multiply both sides. Now the whole side by 5. Now the lucky part on this side is those 5's cancel. And then you just distribute on both sides and you can solve. Okay? I'm not going to work that one all the way out to try to save time. But you would literally just distribute and solve for y, just like we did on the last two. I just wanted to show you what to do if you have a whole side divided by 5. Okay, number 4 we are going to do all the way through. Okay, so what am I going to do first on number four? Parentheses. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> Multiply. Distribute. Okay. So three times x is three x. Three times one is three. I'm going to bring down that left side. What do I want to do next? Always move the x. So how do I move the three x? Subtract. What I do on one side, I do on the other. What happens? They both cancel. Okay, and I'm left with negative 7 equals 3. First off, anytime both of your x's cancel, that means it's a special case. Okay, so does, and you have to stop. You can't keep going. You can't solve negative 7 equals 3. So is this true or false? Does negative 7 equal 3? It's false. So what do we think the solution is? I accept guesses. No solution. No solution is 100% right. There's no way to solve this because when you try, negative 7 doesn't equal negative 3, or positive 3, it doesn't work. They're not the same. It's false. No solution. Any questions with what I just did? So we're going to look at another special case. Okay, so we're going to solve this one. Now remember, you're always going to make sure both sides of your equal sign are simplified fully before you try to move anything to the opposite sides and solve. So the left side, is it simplified fully? Yes, the left side is. Is the right side? So what are we going to do first? Distribute, multiply. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 is 2. Bring down your plus 3x, bring down your minus 7. Now what can I do? Huh? Yeah, we're going to combine our like terms. You're exactly right. So we have our 2x and our positive 3x are like terms. Our 2 and our negative 7 are like terms. So I'm going to bring down that left side because, again, we haven't even messed with it yet. What's 2x plus 3x? And what's 2 minus 7? Okay, what do we do next? They're equal. You're exactly right. So technically, if you realize right away they're equal, you can stop. I usually don't notice. I don't know why. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And if you notice, both of the 5x's cancel. And I'm left with negative 5 equals negative 5. Is that true or false? True. True. So what do you think my solution is? No. One solution is when you get a number. 
What what what's another way to say all solutions? Kind of. Close. That's not wrong. What's another way of saying all solutions? So it's all real numbers. Infinite's not wrong. I don't want y'all to think that. It's right. I was just looking for these specific words. All real numbers. The fancy R. I feel like a pirate when I just said that. Any questions with that? Okay. I'm going to show you this really ugly problem. And then I'm going to show y'all a trick for a couple of your practice problems. And then I'm going to let y'all practice. Okay? So this is the ugly problem. Okay. I think fractions are terribly ugly when it comes to math. I hate fractions. I hate decimals. Just like pretty numbers, but that's not why. So, what do you think we need to do? No. Kind of, but if we're multiplying, what are we trying to f accomplish? Huh? We're trying to get rid of the, the fractions. Okay, so we can actually get the LCD, the least common denominator. Do y'all remember hearing that? We need to find our least common denominator. We, meet, we need to make the denominators match. Okay, because if all of the denominators match, you can cancel them all and just solve the top and it looks pretty. So what is our least common denominator? No. Twelve. If you aren't sure how he came up with 12, you can really just look at the bottom. 3 times 2 is 6. Those both go into 6, but 4 does not go into 6, so that can't work. 4 times 2 is 8. 3 doesn't go into 8. 4 times 3 is 12. So you just kind of play around with the numbers, and you'll find your least common denominator. So 12 is our least common denominator. Okay. How do I make a 3 turn into a 12 by multiplying? By 4. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the, dot, the top. That's what keeps the fraction equal. Because think about it, is 4 over 6 and 2 over 3 equal? Yeah, so one's just simplified. So we're kind of like unsimplifying here. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 4 is 16, all over 12. Now, what times 2 is 12? Eight. 6. Six. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. That's what keeps it even. So I get 6x over 12, because don't forget that x is here, and it always goes with the top. Okay. Here you're going to multiply by 3, by 3, and you get 3x over 12. There's a minus, so make sure you put that minus. 3 times 4 times 4, and I get 28 over 12. So I'm going to explain to you really fast why you can forget about all the denominators now that they match. When every term has the same denominator, what I do to one side of the equal sign, as long as I do it to the other, it's still equal, right? How do you get rid of divide by 12? Multiply by 12. If I multiply both sides by 12, guess what happens to all of the denominators? They all cancel. And now we're left with just the top. 8x plus 16 plus 6x equals 3x minus 28. Now does it look like something we can solve? Yes. So it sucks getting there, but it makes the problem way easier. So what would I do next? Huh? Yeah, I'm going to add my like terms. So 8x plus 6x is what? 14. So I like to move my smaller variable first, my smaller term with a variable. I get 11x plus 16 equals negative 28. 
Whoop, might have to jump and see what I'm doing. Okay, now what? Subtract 16 from both sides. Divide both sides by 11. I know this is so much. It goes negative 4. I don't see it. Oh, yeah, okay. I give you that. Okay, so now what I'm about to show you is kind of like um, a heads up on your packet. Okay, so if you look at a problem like number nine, I'm going to write it out, so don't worry, I'm not solving it. I'm just going to show you a cheat method. Number nine, you have this 0.7x minus 2.3 equals 0 0.5. That's ugly to me. I don't like dealing with decimals. I don't like dealing with fractions if I don't have to. But do you notice that they're all to the tenth term? Like they're all rounded to the tenth? So could you multiply the whole equation by 10 and get rid of the decimal? You could. It, all that does is move your decimal over once. So that ends up giving you 7x minus 23 equals 5. Does that look better? Yes. Yeah. It makes it adding and subtracting. It just makes it better. So now look at number 14. This one's even uglier. 0.12 times y minus 6 plus 0 0.06 y equals 0 0.08 y minus 0 0.00. Now, what do you notice about all of these? They're rounded to the what? The hundredth term. So if I multiply the whole thing by 100, now I want to be, tell you to be careful. You do not multiply what's un, inside this parentheses. The reason being is if you multiply by the 12, isn't the 12 going to multiply by all that? So do you have to multiply it multiple times? No. So you're just going to multiply by this, 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 and this. I don't multiply it by the y, and I don't multiply it by the inside. So that gives me 12y minus 6 plus 6y equals 8y minus 70. Okay, so y'all have the rest of the period. Do, 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 34 minutes to work on your practice for today. Sensational solving equations, that's what it looks like.